Hey y'all, welcome to part three of my Gatton CNC build series. Now in this episode we're going to concentrate on the construction of this CNC stand here. Now this is a capture from SketchUp in which I drew up the stand down here and the CNC table up above here. Uh, this episode we're going to focus on the stand and we'll get into the table in the next episode. So here is a shot of the stand by itself. Now uh, the design is not my design. I got this from Steve Ramsey over at Woodworking for Mere Mortals. When I first saw a video he did a couple of years back about how he rebuilt his workbench, uh, I remember thinking then that that was a pretty decent design and I could use that design uh, for a CNC stand. So if you go over to Steve's YouTube channel and click on videos then scroll back and you have to scroll back quite a ways because uh, the video was posted two years ago. It's this video right here give it a look uh, it's worth watching all the way through and in the description of the video uh, he has a link to where you can download a set of free PDF plans for this table uh, for this uh, stand rather uh, it's a good design it's worth looking into and it's easily modified for your situation uh, should you want to use it uh, I, I thought it was a good design so that's the design I ran with it so in um, back to my stand whoops back to my stand when I went ahead and drew it out I modified it quite a bit um, number one I made it wider I eliminated some shelves that Steve had uh, drawn in and I added some of my own uh, let's go ahead and look at the model within SketchUp and you'll see what I'm talking about now when Steve did his workbench he attached and connected these vertical pieces here with these cross members he made these joints using pocket hole joinery and made basically frames here I did not do that um, I fastened them all straight through with screws to these legs that go full length from uh, floor to stand height uh, the, in fact, the only pocket hole joinery I used at all on this was in these four cross members on the outside here. And that was just simply for ease of access. Uh, because rather than trying to drill all the way through here or running into screws or what have you, it was just easier to pocket hole these four pieces right here. So I went ahead and I took his basic design and I put it into SketchUp, drew it up uh, piece by piece to my dimensions. Then um, I'm going to give you another little tip here. I went ahead and in SketchUp, uh, just once I was finished, uh, went ahead, well, let me do this first here select a piece and go entity info and it gives me all the info here on the piece and I can see that it's a solid component I've got four in this model I then opened up notepad and I made a list of all the components just basically a lumber list of what I needed out of three and a half inch wide uncut two by fours for making the uh, stand itself and I would just go through and measure uh, that for instance that one is 30 inches tall and I have four in the model so I went back over here to notepad and you can see here for 30 inches long I have four I wrote this up this lumber cut list so that I could keep track of it then I went to a website that I found simply by accident which is called cut list now this is a online cut list calculator as it says and I'll put a link in the description below but there is the URL right here 
and what you'll do is you'll come in with your list and you'll select your available stock. Now in my case I used uh, 8 foot 96 inches for this example. However, they also have standard 8 foot studs here, 92.625, just in case that's what you have or what's available. Or you can create your own stock. Now, then you will, so you'll select the stock that you have. Now, if you notice, it doesn't care about width. This will only calculate the length of the material that you need. So I have 8 foot 96 inch uh, material 2 by 4 selected. Uh, I will go with the cut width. This is the kerf of your blade, how wide your blade is and how much material is going to be lost on each cut. Then we'll come down here to this part, to this section, and this is where you'll need this lumber list here. Like, for instance, I already have entered, I need eight pieces up here, 45 inches long. I have eight pieces, 45 inches long, entered. So now I need eight pieces, 42 inches long. So I'll come down and enter eight, 42 inches long, then click the Add button. Then I just go down my lumber list part by part and add those in two pieces, how long was that? Uh, 35 inches long. 35 inches long and click add. Go through that until you've got all of your parts that you're going to need entered. And it only works in fractions. This will, excuse me, in decimals. This will not work with fractions. So if you have something uh, like in my particular case, I have a part that is seven and seven eighths. Or well, let's go up here. Uh, yeah, uh, seven and seven eighths long. I would enter the decimal equivalent, and he puts a little cheat sheet over here. So I would use seven, and there's seven eighths. It's 0.875. I would enter 7.875 here. Okay. So you've got a little cheat sheet here to help you out with fractions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once you get all of your parts entered here and you've got it complete, put a check mark here into Output to New Window. Then you can enter a title. You can enter any notes that you want. And click Go. It will open a new tab. And there, is your, there are your components. That's your lumber list that you just created. So I have eight 45 inch long pieces, eight 42 inch long pieces, and two 35s. This tells me that I need nine eight foot boards to get all of these parts out of it. And it lets me know here how much scrap and how much drop I'm going to have. And it numbers the parts in the drawing. So it's actually a very good program. It's absolutely free. And here's another little tip for you. If you want to save this, print this out, save it for later, right click, hit print. And if you're using Google Chrome, it will go to the print page. And one of your printer destinations is save as PDF. Click save as PDF as your printer destination. Click Save, and then you'll navigate to wherever you want to save this as a PDF file on your computer. So, as an example, I have printed up this one that I use to cut out the parts for my table, or for my stand, rather. And it's it's a real good uh, program. It's, it's real easy to use, and it... Uh, it really helps out quite a bit. So, let's get back into the 3D model here of my uh, stand. And I think I've just about covered everything on the design and uh, how I came up with uh, how, many, how much lumber I was going to need to buy to uh, build it. 
And um, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and go outside and actually start making some sawdust on this project. Okay, so the first step is obviously to try to cut these all down to length. So I set up some stop blocks and got out the chop saw and commenced doing just that. And with the items cut to length, it was time to start putting them to, together. Here I'm uh, counter boring some pieces, gluing them down, and then attaching them, clamping them in place, then attaching them with some two and a half inch exterior wood screws. And it wasn't until I watched this clip that I realized just how flimsy and flexible that table I'm working on is. Then came time to glue in the cross members along the bottom, making sure that I keep all the keep everything nice and square. Now this little high-speed, low-drag stand, I've got my glue bottle set in, which keeps the glue upside down, is actually just the lid off of a detergent bottle. I don't remember where I got that tip from, but it really works a treat. If you're wondering why it's not tipping over as I'm using it, it's because uh, the glue bottle's less than half full, but usually that's about the point where I need something like this. And once again getting everything ready and screwing down my center portions of the legs and then there's the top stretcher. Now for the four pieces that need them I'm using my little mini pocket hole jig. And there's one completed frame. And I had so much fun making that one, I made another one. So, now it's time for some assembly. Now, not having any pipe clamps long enough, you end up getting into some creative clamping uh, situations here. And um, I found that I had to join a couple together, as you see pictured there. And that was just to get everything established, get everything put into place, get it to where it'll stand up on its own. Then I screwed pilot ho or drilled pilot holes, countersunk them just enough to get them to stay together, and then did the same down below, and went back up to the top and added a second screw. I did not use any glue in this portion of the build. And of course I took my time to make sure, check every once in a while to make sure that it was running square. And it did. Again, creative clamping solutions. Then added the four braces up in the front with uh, pocket hole joinery. And around back as well. And when it's all said and done, there's the completed stand. Now, I have not got the shelves or the shelf backs put in yet, but that'll come at a later time. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, give me a thumbs up down there. And if you'd like to follow along with uh, this build, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. But whether you subscribe or not, 
again, thank you very much for watching. Take care.